This is the first lesson looking at magnetic fields. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to state what happens when like poles are brought together. That means identical poles and unlike poles are brought together. You should be able to name some common magnetic materials that are attracted to magnets. You should be able to recall where around the magnet the field is the strongest. You should be able to describe two ways in which we can plot a magnetic field to see the pattern around a magnet. You should be able to state the direction of the magnetic field around a magnet. You should be able to understand that it's repulsion, not attraction, that's a test for whether an object is a magnet or a magnetic material or not a magnetic material at all. And finally, as an extra challenge, you could use the domain theory to explain why some materials are attracted to magnets and others aren't. So before we get on to magnetic fields, let's quickly think about what a field is. Well, in science, it's a place where any object experiences a force without something actually touching that object to cause that force. So let me give you an example. Now, if we dropped a cow out of the sky, you wouldn't expect it to move like that. would expect the cow to fall straight down. Now, this is because of a gravitational field. And so you can see that this is what's called a field line. It shows the direction in which the cow experiences the force. So what happens if we drop the cow down under in Australia? Well, it will do that instead. So how do scientists explain this? Well, as I've said, they use not that type of field, but the idea of a gravitational field, a space or a space where mass experiences a force. So you can see wherever I drop the cow, and we're using the cow to explore the field lines of the gravitational field, it should go straight down. So these are the field lines, and the direction shows the force on the mass, which is the cow, and which way it acts. And you can see that it's a uniform field because the field lines are equally spaced. In Australia, it looks like that. Now that's what the field looks like if we're close to the Earth. But what happens if you're out in space? What would the field lines look like then? Well, we've got to drop the cow again to find out. So, of course, when I drop the cow, it's going to be attracted to Earth like that. Drop the cow from there, and it's pulled that way towards the Earth, and so on. So, the gravitational field around the Earth, when you move far away from the Earth, is actually what's called a radial field. It's spreading out. And you can see that it's strongest here, but as you move further away from the Earth, the gravitational field lines get further apart, and so it gets weaker. So, that's a gravitational field, and we can see the field lines here show us the pattern. So, what other types of fields are there other than gravitational fields? Well, hint, where else do objects experience a force without anything touching them? Well, the first one you could say is a magnetic field because one magnet can be attracted to the other in a magnetic field. The other type of field is electric fields where charged particles experience a force and you can see that the hair has all been charged up and so it repels each other like that in an electric field. We're not studying electric fields, but it's worth knowing the three types of field. Gravitational fields, magnetic fields, and electric fields. So let's now have a look at magnetic fields. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to watch a short video that I've done to show you which type of metals are magnetic materials or attracted to magnets. So I've got a whole load of different metals that I found at home during lockdown. Um, I'm going to test each one with a magnet to see which ones are magnetic materials. So that nail there is made out of iron. So iron is a magnetic material, it's attracted to magnet. That's brass, that's not attracted. That's copper, that again is not attracted to a magnet. That's steel, which is an alloy of iron, and that's attracted, that's brass again. That paperclip is steel, You can see that aluminium is not attracted at all. Finally, a paperclip is an alloy, which is steel again, which contains 90% iron. And you can see that's also attracted. So the only three magnetic materials, which are elements, are iron, nickel, and cobalt. 
Steel is also a magnetic material, but that's an alloy. It contains iron and carbon to make it slightly stronger. I want to now show you a short video I've made to look at what happens when we bring magnets close together. So magnets have north and south poles. With these magnets, the white spot on it represents a north. So if I bring a north and a south pole together, you can see they attract. If I now turn it round and have north and north, they're like poles and they repel. Equally, if I have a south and a south, they also repel, which are like poles. So why is it only a few metals are attracted to magnets? Well, this is a bit of a challenge, this bit, but I want to explain it to you. Here's our magnetic material, and it actually contains what are called domains. And those domains are like tiny little magnets. And can you see they're all jumbled up there, which means they cancel each other out. So there's no overall magnetism in that piece of metal. And that could be a lump of iron. Now, if we bring the magnet close to it, it then aligns all of these little domains in the same direction as the magnetic field of the magnet. Watch what happens. So can you now see they've all lined up? And because they've now all lined up, they don't cancel each other out, they support each other. And so this end is south and this end is north and notice south and north will attract. So that is why a magnetic material gets attracted to a magnet. And they're only iron, cobalt and nickel that have these domains. Other metals don't, so aren't attracted to magnets. So this is a common question, both at GCSE and at Key Stage 3. Here I've got three different objects. One is a magnet, one is a magnetic material, and one is a piece of metal. How can you, with a magnet, discover which is which? Have a think about it, then I'll show you this video that I've done so you can see the test yourself. So what we need to identify these different objects is a magnet, which is like a test magnet. So bring the magnet close and nothing happens at all with that material. Turn the magnet round, still nothing happens. It's neither a magnet or a magnetic material. With the second one, it attracts one way and if you turn the magnet around, it also attracts the other way. So this is a magnetic material. And finally, the last one, attracts one way, but when you turn the magnet around, it repels, which means it must be a magnet. So a magnetic material is attracted to the North Pole, and it's also attracted to the South. So it's attracted to both, whichever way you turn the magnet. With a magnet, one pole will attract it, and if you turn the magnet around, the other world pole will repel it. So only magnets will repel each other. And of course, if it's not a magnetic material, it won't move at all. So next thing is, how can we investigate what a magnetic field looks like? We've looked at a gravitational field by dropping a cow. And of course, we can't use a cow to test this. There are two ways of doing this. One is to use iron findings and the other is to use a compass. So first of all, let's have a look at using iron findings. In a lab, you just get two books and here is your magnet and you put a piece of paper on top and you shake iron filings over the magnet and tap it and the iron filings line up along the field lines. So watch a short video to show you the magnetic field lines being revealed with iron filings. So putting the magnet between the books and then putting a piece of paper over and start sprinkling with iron filings, you'll start to see the magnetic field pattern revealed as the iron filings line up along the field lines of the magnet. Tapping the paper also helps. You notice the field lines spread away from each other and they come out of one pole and into the other. You'll also notice the field is strongest at the poles where the magnetic field lines are closest together. So that was showing the field pattern just around one magnet. What I want to do is to show the field pattern if I've got a north and a south pole which are attracting. And you can see you get a pattern a bit like that where it looks like they're attracted together. So I've now got two magnets that are north and the south, so they attract, separating them slightly, and then putting the paper on and replotting the field. You'll notice a strong field between the two of attraction. 
Secondly, I've got a north and a north or a south and a south and they will repel each other and so we actually get a neutral point in the middle and you can see that those field lines look like they're going to spring them apart. So you quickly have a look at me plotting this one as well. This time we can see the north and north are repelling. So now let's have a look at what the magnetic field looks like. You can see the field lines between the north poles bend away from each other and almost like they're trying to spring apart and in the centre you've got a very weak field. So that was the first way of investigating magnetic fields, but it doesn't show the direction in which the magnetic field goes like we had when we dropped the cow. So to do that we have to use a compass. So first of all, what is a compass? So I've got a normal compass just to check that it's going to point the right way. I've got a bowl of water and I've got my needle. And just find a fridge magnet or any other magnet should work. So to make the needle magnetic and turn it into a compass needle, you need to stroke it with the magnet over and over again, making sure that you move the magnet out of the way when you go back again. You need to do it lots and lots of times to make that needle as strong a magnet as possible. Of course, it will eventually lose its magnetism, but during the practical, it should keep its magnetism. To reduce surface tension and stop the needle being dragged to the edge of your bowl, just add a little bit of washing up liquid and stir that round. Now place a circle of paper on the water and then place your needle on top of the paper so it doesn't sink and you will see that this one's turning round and it is lining up along the magnetic field of the earth just as the same way that the compass in the corner is. So that's how you make a compass at home. So the other way to investigate magnetic fields is by using a compass. And the good thing about a compass is it will actually show you the direction of the magnetic field, a bit like when we drop the cow with the gravitational field. So what is a compass and how does it work? Well, a compass is just a magnet which is pivoted so it can turn. And if you get a magnet and put it on a stirrup and so as allow it to suspend and twist, it will line up along the magnetic field lines of the Earth because the Earth has its own magnetic field with a North Pole and a South Pole. If you just watch this little video I've made, you can see how a compass works. This is an old fashioned compass. Um, it, this compass here is a magnet. It's got a North Pole on this end and a South Pole on this end, and it's suspended on a needle so it can spin. So if you see, if I bring a North Pole towards it, that's the South. And if I then turn it round and bring the north towards it, it repels. So you can see that it's got a north and a south pole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it spin so that it can rotate round and line up with the Earth's magnetic field without any other magnetic field in the way. And eventually it stops. And there it is. So if I bring a little compass and put it down next to the compass, you'll see that it lines up along the magnetic field as well. You can see that that is exactly the same. So north is pointing that way, that's the north pole, that's towards the north pole of the Earth. It's called the north pole of the compass because it points to the geographical north pole. But actually, this is the magnetic south pole because north and south attract. So if we put magnets in a magnetic field, you can see they line up along the field lines. And we'll do that in a minute. But you can make your own compass at home. All you need is a needle, a fridge magnet, a bowl of warm water, washing up liquid and a circle of paper. Watch a short video I've made and that shows you how to make your own. Then you can have a go yourself. So you can see that my homemade compass was able to pivot and line up with the magnetic field of the Earth. So how do we use a compass now we know what it is to actually plot magnetic field lines? Now, at GCSE, you have to be able to explain this in your exam, but at Key Stage 3, you just have to be able to do it, but it's worth knowing the technique. So watch this short video, it explains how to do it. So the first thing you do is you draw around the magnet, and then you make sure you label it north and south. What I'm now going to do is mark crosses around the magnet. This will become clear why in a minute. 
I'm going to put my magnet back and then place a plotting compass next to one of the crosses. What I then do is mark where the compass is pointing to show the direction in which the field. I then move the compass to the next cross. So what I'm doing is I'm using the compass to plot where the magnetic fields are going. You can just about see in the video the compass needle is pointing towards the South Pole. So I'm now going to join those lines up and put an arrow to show the direction in which the field goes. What I then do is start at the next cross and keep plotting the magnetic field using the compass. I particularly like these ones because you can see that the magnetic field line goes out of the north and goes all the way around and back into the south. You could, if you want to, start between those field lines and fill out even more detail. I'm just going to sketch the rest in. Firstly, you can see at the poles, the field lines are closest together, so that is where the field is the strongest. You'll also notice the direction of the magnetic field. The field lines go out of the North Pole and into the South Pole. So this is the overall magnetic field around a bar magnet. And you can see that field lines come out of the North and into the South. And if you put a compass here, it would line up along there. If you put a compass here, it would line up that way. Notice as well that the magnet is strongest at the poles where the field lines are closest together. And finally, I just want to show you one other thing, which is about how we can induce magnetism, which is more GCSE than key stage three. So remember, magnetic materials have these domains which are all jumbled up and so cancel each other out. These are tiny little magnets all jumbled up. But of course, if we bring a magnetic material towards them, they line those little domains up so that we get overall magnetism only while the magnet's there. If we take the magnet away, they all go jumbled up again and it loses its magnetism. So if I had a magnet and a magnetic material already, this is an induced magnet now. If I now move it towards this one, it will also induce magnetism in there. Now, of course, if I take this magnet away, all of these domains will jumble back up and we'll lose it. So an induced magnet is one that only can attract a magnetic material if the magnet is touching it. So if you watch this next short video, I'll show you that by using a magnet and paper clips. So you can see, first of all, bringing the iron nail next to the paper clip, it doesn't attract it at all because the iron nail is not a magnet. However, placing a magnet on it means that it will line up the domains and therefore it will become an induced magnet. And you can see now it is attracting the paper clip. The paper clip now has an induced magnetism in it, so it might be able to attract yet another paper clip if the strength of the magnet is strong enough, and it does, can it do a third? So we've now got a second induced magnet in the paper clip, and it will just about attract the third one. So you can see after watching that video, we've got the magnet, which induces magnetism in the iron nail by unjumbling the domains and lining them up, making this end north and that end south, so north and south attract, and it attracts it. But because the magnetism is going through this induced magnet as well, it also lines up these domains of this paper clip like that. So we've got a north and a south, so they attract. And if the magnet is strong enough at this end and the magnetic field is strong enough coming through here, it may well line up the domains of this paper clip. So making that magnetic, inducing magnetism in it just for a while. As soon as you take that magnet away, then all of the magnetism is then lost and they can't attract each other again. So that is what induced magnetism is. So finally, what are the differences between an induced magnet and a permanent magnet? Remember, an induced magnet is a magnetic material that we put next to a magnet to make all the domains line up. So a permanent magnet produces its own magnetic field. An induced magnet is a material that becomes a magnet 
when placed in a magnetic field. Induced magnetism always causes a force of attraction. So this induced magnet can only ever attract something, it can't repel it. And lastly, when we remove the magnetic field, the induced magnetism is lost and it goes back to those jumbled up domains again. So let's just review what you should have learnt in this lesson. So you should now be able to state that like poles, like north and north and south and south repel, and unlike poles, like north and south attract. You should be able to state that oh, the only magnetic materials that are attracted to magnets are iron, nickel and cobalt. You should be able to recall that the strongest part of the magnetic field in a bar magnet is next to the poles. We can investigate magnetic fields by using iron filings or by using a plotting compass. Magnetic fields go from north to south. We can test whether something is a magnet by getting another magnet and it will attract or repel. If it's a magnetic material, whichever way you turn them, test magnet, the magnetic material will be attracted. And if it's not a magnetic material, nothing's gonna happen. And finally, well done if you've got the idea of domains where they unjumble themselves to line up along the magnetic field in order to induce magnetism. Next week, we can look at electromagnets. We're going to look at how we can increase the strength of electromagnet and what we can use electromagnets for.